In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just a few words about this feast that was dropped by Bonini in the liturgical reforms. You'll notice a lot of the feasts that were dropped from the, the ancient liturgy are the ones that highlight the murderous and persecuting spirit of the Jews. You'll notice that. It's all to please the enemies of Christ. And we Catholics, of course, we have no hatred for Jews. We pray for them. We want them to come to know the true light, Jesus Christ the King, who is the true Messiah. He was their Messiah, and they rejected him. Had the Jews truly accepted Christ and adored him as God, it would have been tremendous. Jerusalem would have been the center for the whole world to come to know the light of Christ. It would have been the Rome of yesteryear. And that was God's intention. But the Jews rejected not only the true God, the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, but they also put to death many of the prophets sent to tell them, stop sinning, stop offending God, prepare for the Redeemer to come. So the, the, the murder of the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, who was thrown in a septic tank and, and was killed later, and then uh, Zacharias, as Christ mentions in today's Gospel, and then St. Stephen. So St. Stephen was one of the deacons ordained by St. Peter, one of the first seven. And here's the account of this feast, which is the feast of the finding of his body, but not only his body, but also the martyr Gamaliel. Gamaliel was one of the high priests. He was one of the members of the chief priests who actually became Catholic. He was like Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, and they're all saints. They're actually all saints. But here's the account. The bodies of these saints, St. Stephen, the first martyr, Gamaliel, Nicodemus, and Abibon, which had for a long time lain in an obscure and squalid place, were found near Jerusalem when Honorius was the emperor through a revelation made by God to a priest named Father Lucian. While he was asleep, Gamaliel appeared to him in the likeness of a venerable and majestic old man and pointed out to him precisely where the bodies were buried, commanding him to go to the Bishop John of Jerusalem and to arrange with him that these bodies should receive a more honorable burial. So obviously, open brackets, obviously this is before the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70. So between Christ's ascension and the year 70, there, this is where this happened. And remember, Gamaliel also instructed, he would have instructed St. Stephen as a young man, and he would also have, he taught St. Paul, Gamaliel. So he, he's quite a character that's kind of uh, hidden in the Gospels also, but he's one of those heroes with, like St. Nicodemus and St. Joseph of Marimathea. On hearing the Bishop of Jerusalem assembled the bishops and priests, on hearing this, the priests of the neighboring city and proceeded to the spot, he found some vaults below the ground from which a most fragrant odor was emitted. When the news was spread around, a great multitude of people assembled there, and many of them who were sick and weak from various ailments went home healthy and sound. And the, whole, and the sacred body of St. Stephen, which was at that time carried with the highest honors to the Holy Church of Sion, was transferred to Constantinople in the reign of the Theodosius the Younger, and then was transferred to Rome, where Pelagius the first, the Pope, was the supreme pontiff and was laid in the tomb of St. Lawrence the Martyr in Agro Verano. That would be St. Lawrence outside the walls. 
So St. Stephen, he shines with his love for the faith, the love for our Lord Jesus Christ. And the problem with St. Stephen was he told the truth. He told the truth, and it didn't fit well with the Jews. So, of course, they stoned him to death. Here's the account from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. This is the words that St. Stephen used, preaching. He calls them, O stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear, you always oppose the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so you do also. So who's the crowd St. Stephen is preaching to is the crowd that cried for let Jesus be crucified. Crucify him, crucify him. It's the same synagogue of Satan, the same rats that made the deal with Judas. And, and Judas brought uh, Christ in the uh, He brought the crowd, the mob, to arrest Christ. And, and Judas got his 30 pieces of silver, which he made the deal with Annas. So this was the same pack of rats. And St. Stephen is trying to, to open their eyes and, and to t tell them, Christ, the one you crucified, rose from the dead. I saw him. I saw his wounds in his hands and feet. We saw him. He ate. He wasn't a ghost. He was smiling. He's alive and he's God and he's king. How can you refuse this? So he continues preaching, preaching to the Jews. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, our Lord, of whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers, you who received the law as an ordinance of angels and did not keep it. Now as they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed their teeth at him. Doesn't that always happen when people want to live in sin, live in, in, in error, they don't like to hear the truth. So we got to always pray, all of us, to love the truth, to be willing to lay down our life and die for it, rather than compromise with error, rather than compromise with lies or sin, and live a lie. And it's a grace to love the truth. It's a grace, and we got to fight for it, and we got to really pray for it. Most people don't care about the truth. Most people really don't. Very few do. And that's why down history, it's always been the, the smaller number who keep the faith or resist. Like in the time of the French Revolution, the Vendée, all of France should have risen up, but it was just the Catholics in the Vendée who rose up. Same in, in Protestant England. All of England should have rose up against this false religion of Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth and the Anglican falsehood. And who stood up? Only one bishop out of, out of many. One bishop, St. John Fisher, and then a handful of priests and monks. Only a handful. Most went with the revolution. And same in the time of the Cristeros, uh, it wasn't the majority of Mexicans. It was the, the, the great fighters, the Cristeros, who rose up in the first wave and the second wave. In the second wave, they were even more betrayed by the bishops. And then at Vatican II, you would have expected all 200, what was it, 2,800 bishops who should have opposed modernism and the destruction of our Catholic Church by the weaselly documents. And who stood up? At the long run, in the first few years, there was 250 bishops who stood up against it. But then they all caved in because of pressure and false obedience. And then who ended up being the only one standing was Archbishop Lefebvre and Bishop de Castro Mayer. That's it. With a few quiet bishops who quietly supported them, but they weren't going to stick their neck out and get persecuted and suffer a false suspension, suffer a false excommunication, for defending the Catholic faith against popes who were all for the whole revolution of Freemasonry within the church. So it always happens that way, and we got to always be ready to stand with the truth. Men are men when they 
uh, have conviction of the kingship and the divinity and the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes men. We have no more men anymore because no one's convinced of the divinity, the kingship of Jesus Christ. There's very few men that have a spine anymore. So have a spine and fight for the truth. It's a grace if we receive it. It is a terrible punishment on us if we sell it for a, a bowl of pottage and 30 pieces of silver. But we got to pray for this grace. And if you're close to the Virgin Mary, you're going to receive that grace. And you're going to get to heaven if you stay close to her and wear her scapular, pray her rosary every day, and live the spirit of reparation to the Immaculate Heart. So St. Stephen would have known Our Lady. He would have certainly met her and, and, and kissed her and, and reverenced her as the Mother of God after the ascension of Christ. So here's what happened with St. Stephen. But he, Stephen, being filled, full of the Holy Ghost, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And, and what did they do, the Jews? They should have knelt down and said, We're sorry, Lord, for crucifying you. Because remember when Christ stood before the high priest and the, and the mob, he said, And you'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and majesty. So St. Stephen is already saying it. I see the Son of Man who you crucified. I see him at the right hand of the Father. So he's telling the Jews there is three persons of God, the Father and the Son, and of course the Holy Ghost. He's professing the Holy Trinity, and in his he's professing and seeing with his own eyes the glory of Christ the King. And the Jews, instead of accepting this truth and realizing that they committed deicide and repent, what did they do? They cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and rushed upon him all together. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. That's St. Paul. And St. Paul was holding their garments, and he approved of the murder. He was all for it. Throw him in the, hit a, hit a rock in his head. Throw it harder. He was there. And St. Paul said, I was a murderer. I am the least of the apostles. I persecuted the church of God. But our Lord had plans for St. Paul, and he knocked him off his horse, and St. Paul did a U-turn. And while they were stoning Stephen, he prayed and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Now this is where another lesson we have to learn. Does St. Peter, does Saint Stephen here say, Lord, send down lightning and strike them all dead? Lord, send your angels and slice them all in half. That's not his spirit, and that can't be our spirit either. Whenever those persecute us, whenever those hurt us, whenever those attack us, especially for the faith, we have to return what the saints did, pray for them, what our Lord told us, bless them and curse not and return good for evil. And it's easier said than done. And St. Paul and St. Stephen, falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Lord, do not lay this sin against them. And with these words, he fell asleep in the Lord. So he forgave them. So all the saints do this to those who put them to death and persecute them. Remember St. Thomas More, with the executor who was going to chop his head off, head off, his head off. St. Thomas More took out of his pocket the few coins he had left, and he, he gave it to the executioner. He said, here's a tip. Do your job well and send me to heaven. Now there broke out on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered abroad throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. And devout men took of Stephen's burial, and devout men took care of Stephen's burial and made great lamentation over him. So that's when they were buried, and then later, before the year seventy, 
the priest, Father Lucian, had a dream and saw where his body was, and he gathered the bishop, and they found the body of St. Stephen, plus Gamaliel and the others, and Nicodemus. So let's pray to St. Stephen, the martyr, who really loved the Jews, and he loved those who didn't know Jesus Christ, didn't love Jesus Christ, didn't obey Jesus Christ. That's the spirit of the true apostles, the, the zeal to save souls, the desire to save souls from hell. A doctors grow, do a heroic work, and nurses, when they're honest and they do their, their job well, because they, they save the bodies of people from sickness, disease, whatever it is. Dentists do a good job because they help people save their teeth. Firefighters do a great job because they save people from being burned alive in their houses. And all paramedics, they're heroic because they go out to the car accidents and try to save who they can of their bodies. And soldiers are always honored. Soldiers and knights have always been honored because they'll give their life for their country to save their families, they save their homeland in a just war when it's unjustly attacked. But what can be greater? All these save the body, which is honorable. And Christ commands it, feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, give home to those who have no place to stay, and all, all the virtues and all the works of mercy. But what can be greater than saving the soul, the eternal soul? Of, of anyone. If you convert a soul, says St. James, you save your own. And this is the apostolic zeal. And it doesn't just belong to priests. Monks and nuns must have this spirit. And brothers of offering their whole life, their vows, their daily life, their sacrifices, their penances, their joys, their everything with Christ sacrificed on the altar. That's, that's what we do. We sacrifice our whole life with Christ crucified. And then marry people too. Some of you will be fathers of families. Some of you will be working in the world. And you still must have this apostolic spirit to save souls with people you work with, people, friends you meet, uh, wherever you go. And that must be the, the charity that burns in us, to save souls. St. Gregory the Great says, Seek friends on the way to God. Seek people who will come with you like friends to, take, to go with you to heaven. Seek comrades on the way to heaven, his exact words. So let us turn to the Mother of God and pray for the grace to love the truth as St. Stephen did, be willing to die for it as St. Stephen did, and forgive, our, forgive all injuries, forgive our enemies, forgive those who persecute us in any way, Pray for them and bless them. That's the Catholic spirit. But to, to die fighting like St. Stephen did. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.